What's up everyone? Welcome back to 2 GOZ Garage. As you guys know, I had to order the brake fluid to be able to do this. And after I got the brake fluid, I had to find a time. Now I got time to do it, so let's get this thing done. Right here, you can see I got my Motul.5.1 brake fluid. This is the brake fluid I will be using. This is the same brake fluid I used on the 350Z. And over here, I have the Snap-on Vacuum Brake Bleeder. If you guys are going to be doing this to your vehicle, I suggest you guys get a vacuum bleeder because this saves your life. This brake fluid is outstanding. It's dot three and four. As you can see non-silicone based. So this should be the perfect brake fluid for the truck. When you bleed your brakes, you want to start from the furthest hydraulic line from the brake booster. Well, in our case, the reservoir, which is gonna be the passenger side rear. And then you're gonna go to the driver's side rear, then to the passenger side front, then to the driver's side front. So, and then it lastly will be the LSPV. But as you guys know, I deleted the LSPV because I have my bias valve which I can control the pressure to the rear brake so we don't need that anymore. So we're going to take this to the back and we'll go ahead and start. We're going to need a 10 millimeter wrench. That way we can take off the fitting to bleed the lines. So as I mentioned, we need to start with the passenger side rear, the furthest one from the master cylinder. If we come here to the bottom, you can see here's my brake drum and up there is my bleeder valve. So I need to take that thing loose. There you go. Might be a little tight. Now you can see it's starting to leak the fluid. There you go, now it's on. All right, so we gotta get the air hose now, connect it to the brake bleeder. And then, now we can just pull this trigger. And you see it starts sucking the fluid out. You see all the air bubbles too. You can see all the air bubbles is taken out. That shows you all the line, all the bubbles that you have in the lines, all the air. So you want to make sure you just thing get solid fluid, then you'll be good. When you're doing this, you want to make sure you keep that reservoir full of the fluid. That way it doesn't get air, because if it gets air, then you have to restart the process again. As you can see, it is pulling the fluid down. I just filled it up again. It was about halfway. So you want to make sure you keep that thing up. Don't let it get air. Above the valve. Once you see that solid fluid coming out, tighten up that bolt. So you're basically sucking all of the old fluid out until you see that new fresh fluid. I did suck a lot of the new fluid out. If I show you guys the canister now, it's like clean. You, some of it is clean and the old stuff you see is dirt. So I'm gonna get all that dumped out and then we'll move on to the fronts. Now that I have the rears done, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to the passenger side front. And then I just filled it up with fluid, so we should be good for a little bit. So now that we're at the passenger side front wheel, you can see on the Toyota pickups, the bleeder fitting for the calipers is right here on the top. Usually on a caliper like this, a fixed caliper, there should be two fittings, one for each side, but this one, it seems to only have one. So we gotta take this one off. Same thing as the rear. As you guys can see, getting all that old fluid out of there, it's gonna start sucking in the new fluid. All right, we got our fresh fluid. Let's go ahead and tighten this thing down. All right. Passenger side is done. That one went a lot faster than both of the rears. We're gonna do now the last one, which is going to be the driver's side front, which is the one right underneath of the reservoir. So this one should go very quick. And now we just finished our second bottle of brake fluid. So there's two bottles down. These things are pretty hard to take off because they haven't been bled in so long. So what I'm going to do to make it easier for myself is take it off with the socket. Just loosen it a little bit. Pop it loose. And then now we can get our fitting. Let me get the hose. See it's leaking fluid already. Alright. You can see it's already solid so this one should be done. I'm going to tighten it up. There you go. Yeah. Alright, turn it off. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you bleed your brake system. Pretty easy, not too bad. This one went by really fast because the fluid literally went straight down. We should be good now. All right, so moment of truth. So they are pumping, they do have pressure, but it is going all the way down. And as I pump it more, it is getting harder. 
All right, so me and Yondo were like wondering, what the heck, the pedal does not feel normal. It just felt like I had air in the lines, just like how my 350Z felt when it had air in the lines. I was pushing it and it felt kind of spongy. Pedal was going all the way down and I had to pump it in order for it to gain pressure. So what I decided to do was go to the brakes and manually bleed them. And I had Yondo here pumping, pumping the brakes. He did a few pumps and then he held it. And then I released the pressure until the pedal goes all the way down, tighten it back up. The only one that I had pretty good amount of air in is my driver's side rear. It was a lot of air and now that I did all of them, now the pedal is grabbing right away. So it feels, it feels really good. Really good. So now we're good. Tina's, Tina's brakes are done. I'm excited. I'm pumped! So you can see here is my nasty, dirty brake fluid. This thing was disgusting. As I mentioned, this thing has not been changed in years. Ever since I got the truck, I haven't even changed it. And I can't even imagine how much long ago it was changed. Honestly, it's probably original. One thing I highly suggest when you guys are doing this, get yourself one of these bleeders. It saved a lot of time and work. I ended up using two and a half of these bottles. You're gonna wanna get yourself three. I have two left. You don't need that many but you're gonna use up three bottles. The Chase Base Brake Booster Eliminator Kit is officially installed. As you can see, it looks beautiful in the engine bay. I still do not have the turbo manifold and turbo on to see exactly how it's going to look, but it looks amazing and it adds a significant amount of room. You can even, you can ask Yondo. It's crazy. The old reservoir came way out to here with the brake booster and now it's all the way against the firewall, which is amazing. It just looks so much cleaner and it makes my brakes feel so much more solid. The brakes on this thing, they used to be very spongy and honestly for the power that the truck had, it was very scary with the brake system I had. It's just the brakes were not that great. So now I'm stoked to drive this thing and see exactly how it's going to feel on the road. And whenever I do, I will for sure give you guys a video on that. If you guys are going to be doing this to your trucks or any of your vehicles as well, I will put the links to the description to the kit the bias valve, and also the brake fluid that I used. I hope you guys enjoyed watching today's video. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace out, and I hope to see you then.